Chapter 28 Ellie felt like she was floating, as the dragon's blood had covered her, spilling into her ears, her nostrils and her mouth. It had felt like it was smothering her, drowning her. But the moment it was complete, that she was fully encased in the dragon's blood, a shining, golden human being, it had all changed. She had suddenly felt free, as if she had found something for which she had been searching such a long time that she couldn't remember what it was. It felt like she was lying on a cloud, drifting through the sky and bathed in sunlight, except that she couldn't tell where the sun was, and the beautiful golden light seemed to be coming from every direction. She felt relaxed, almost sleepy, but there was a niggling feeling, like she was supposed to be doing something. It took quite some time before she realised that she had no idea what was going on, but she still did not feel frightened. Where am I? she asked lazily into the bright emptiness. How did I get here? There was no answer initially, but there was a change, like something was stirring, waking from an eternity of slumber, or perhaps being drawn nearer. Or am I being taken somewhere? She was so disorientated, it was impossible to know what was happening. Floating through a bright void, she didn't even know which way was up, or if this place even had an up or down. She continued to drift, occasionally asking a question, without really expecting a response. What am I supposed to do? Where should I go? Where are my friends? Where are you taking me? Finally, something appeared. It was a faraway object, a dark speck in the bright void. She was moving towards it, or it may have been moving towards her. The gap began to close more quickly as they accelerated towards one another. Suddenly, she began to feel other forces. Gravity was a welcome sensation, and the object seemed to be above her. But then it was below her, and she was plummeting towards it. Then it was above her again, and she was flying upwards. All the time they were getting closer. As the thing neared, she began to slow, and the fear that she was going to crash into it at a horrifying speed began to flee. The speck had transformed in her view, as it had spiralled closer and had begun to resemble the shape of a man. As they got closer, she could see what he looked like. He was indeed a man, an old man. He had a short steel-grey beard, and the most intensely blue eyes she had ever seen, almost as if they were emitting their own blue light. Ellie did not need to ask who he was. She knew. Hello, Merlin. She greeted him. The old man looked at her, a penetrating stare that gave a feeling that he could see every detail of her life. You are not what I was expecting, he said, sounding a little disappointed. However... You seem to have the advantage of knowing my name, while I do not know yours. Sorry, she offered, a little flummoxed. My name is Ellie. I think I'm your great, 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 um, I'm not sure how many greats, great-granddaughter. The old man, who was wearing a simple grey robe with a brown leather belt, nodded. Well, I knew that one day my descendant... My heir, you might say, would come here. I created many spells preparing for that time, including one of my most intricate spells that allows our minds to connect across the ages. But I was expecting a man, or perhaps a woman. I was not expecting a young girl. I'm not that young, she told him defensively. I'm nearly eleven, the old man smiled. Well, I am nearly two hundred years old. So I suppose you were going to seem young to me, whatever age you were. So, Ellie, wasn't it? He asked, and she nodded. You have my wand, and have entered the ivory realm, and found my valley. She nodded again, although this time it had not been a question. So I suppose you must have your wits about you, and the enchantment I infused my wand with seems to believe that you are worthy of my knowledge. Ellie was confused. So... The dragon's blood is some sort of time machine that lets me talk to you. Hundreds of years in the past. She tried to understand. I am not familiar with what you mean by time machine. But the dragon's blood connects us, bringing us both to a place where time does not exist. Where I can teach you the things you need to know, he explained. So, let me see what I have to work with. The man took a step closer, closing the last of the distance between them and his hand darted out to grip her wrist. With his touch came an explosion of visions through her mind. She was sure that he was seeing them too. 
she rapidly witnessed the key memories of her youth, a mix of her earliest favourite happiest and worst memories. Then, far more slowly, came her memories from the moment she had first seen the goblins and picked up the wand while hidden in Duncan's cupboard. She saw her meeting with Rake, the short time spent with Duncan's clone, her journey to the Ivory Realm, and her meeting with the elders. Then, in painful detail, she saw the goblin attack on the great trees of the fairies, along with her violent and chaotic counter-attack that drove them away. She felt Merlin's grip tighten slightly on her wrist as those scenes brushed along their shared consciousness. Then they watched her recovery with the aid of the fairies, her meeting with Fliss and her decision to rescue Duncan. Her time with Estaga came next, and with visions of the ancient Fablin, Ellie felt a flicker of recognition come through the link from Merlin. Finally, visions flashed of their journey through the mountains, the attack by the Morprax and her exploration of the Valley of Mel. The visions ceased abruptly, and the two of them once again faced each other in the bright void, this place between worlds where time did not exist. Hmm, the old man made an intrigued noise. Perhaps you are older than your years would suggest. It seems my wand has indeed delivered an air worthy of my knowledge. Um, thanks, I guess. But how can you teach me? She asked, just one of the many questions that were whirling through her mind. You will see, soon enough. But first I must ask something. I saw that you have my wand and have even managed to learn how to use your powers to an impressive degree. However, I did not see my ring. Do you have it? He asked, with a concerned tone. Ellie was at a loss. Your ring? I don't know anything about a ring. Although, I didn't know much about the wand either. It was given to my brother, not me, she admitted. Maybe Duncan knows something about your ring. I will ask him once I've rescued him, she stated, still confident that she would find her brother. Talking about him did stir a possible memory. Maybe I have seen a ring. A niggling thought broke through. But where and when? She could remember no details, so did not mention it. I see, the old man said, disappointment clear in his voice. The prophecy told me to pass both my wand and the ring down through my heirs until the Chosen came to the Ivory Realm. If you don't have it, I'm not sure how the rest of the prophecy will play out. But it was clear that I had to find a way to communicate with the Chosen and pass on my knowledge. The Dragon's Blood, which I will tell you was not easy to obtain, has made it possible for us to meet. So now, I must teach you everything I know. Ellie felt increasingly nervous with each word the old man said. A prophecy? About me? I'm supposed to have a ring, but I don't. What does that mean? And Merlin was going to teach her everything he knew. A man that was nearly two hundred years old must know a lot. Uh, how long can we stay here? She asked, thinking it would take a long time for him to teach so much. Merlin raised one eyebrow amused. I told you, Ellie, time does not exist here. It will take as long as it takes, and it will take no time at all. Then he reached out again, this time with both hands and placed them on each side of her head. The visions began, each one becoming deeply etched into her memory.